Hi everybody, um, today I was going to talk about options and options contracts. Um, so basically I have a lot of data here um, to look at and I hope that you enjoy um, this whole presentation. Um, so I started training options and uh, wanted to do some uh, data on uh, basically all the major option contracts. Um, so what I did is I uh, logged into my account and then saw uh, did kind of like a market view and then looked at what are the most uh, common options that are traded um, and then I sorted them by calls and puts um, and then basically compared and then even did the ratio between calls and puts and things like this um, so basically what you're looking at here is about um, a thousand or so uh, contracts um, and data for that. Um, so basically I um, look at some specific contracts um, and basically I got all their strike prices, expiration dates, changes, ask bids, volume, open interest, and then uh, graph them um, so that you can take a look at them. And I compare them between uh, several different data sources. Uh, there's basically three different data sources here um, and uh, we're going to go through uh, all of these there's maybe four um, but uh, in general what I did is I started <coughs> I just did a uh, search on the internet uh, for uh, uh, option contract volume um, and basically came up with these websites um, my favorite one actually turned out to be uh, the Yahoo website um, and it's just uh, this web link up here, finance.yahoo.com slash options, and then highest open interest. Um, so basically what, you, what I did is I grabbed all these contracts and then started to uh, graph them. So we're going to start with these because I believe that these are the most accurate and uh, trustworthy ones. Um, the other ones I don't really know about their data sources and as much as Yahoo because I do trust Yahoo's um, stuff. So, um, so basically what I did here is I um, calculated these per expiration. So I just uh, just did a little uh, uh, expiration date minus today and got the expiration date. Prices change, percent change. That's basically for the day, um, the percent change in that given day. <clears throat> uh, bid, ask prices, and then the difference between the bid and ask prices. Look at the volume and open interest. So uh, first of all, uh, we're going to try to <laughs> look at all this. So um, I do have these equations here that uh, graph this, but basically I put this on the log log graphs to kind of get this looking a little bit more beautiful. And so you can basically see um, what's going on. So in general here, you can see uh, that uh, here you have the ask price. So you can see there's an ask price kind of a general uh, consensus here around one um, so <clears throat> so the uh, 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 so that's basically a hundred dollars uh, for the contract um, you can see that there's uh, 30 cents ones here um, and there is kind of a little bit of a skew right so you can see that as the ask price goes up the volume goes up so um, so if you're trying to trade um, essentially uh, at uh, lower ask prices, uh, you're going to say a lower volume, and that's actually not good. So you want to have high volume. So basically, um, you know, up in here on this quartile is basically where you want to be usually. Um, however, um, so there's open interest uh, compared to the ask price, right? So as you can see, um, as the ask price goes up, open interest goes down, right? Um, so <clears throat> that's actually the exact opposite um, of what I just said. So as you can see, uh, you can see here open interest. So there's basically a lot of open interest, about $40 uh, per contract. Um, so these are really important numbers to think about uh, for me because, you know, I was trying to decide, okay, what kind of contract do I want to buy? Um, and it looks like most of the open interest, um, and that's if you're also trying to sell something, um, would be... Um, in this price range about 35 uh, cents or so um, so that's good to know if you're trying to trade um, <coughs> so you should basically be looking for contracts on that <coughs> now uh, volume versus bid to ask difference so this is a little bit complicated right so if you take the ask price minus the 
minus the bed, um, you basically see that anything where you have significant differences in the bit to ask would be bad, right? So here you can see that uh, right around here, a volume of about 400 is uh, expected, but then you could see in the thousands as well. So you certainly don't want to be below the 400 mark. Um, and you can see here uh, when the spread is two, uh, the volume needs to be at least about three. To, the more volume, the better, right? So you want to be on the top side of this. You can see that there's kind of a little blip here. Now, if I want, I can change this to a, a polynomial and then kind of do it a different order here. And you can probably see some little glitches in what's going on here. But uh, <clears throat> um, so kind of flattens out there. So we're just going to keep this as a power series and leave it like this. So these equations can be helpful if you want to input the difference. So for example, you can x as your difference. So if you see a contract, um, 5 cent difference is looking like the volume is actually going up here, which is kind of strange. Um, uh, that this little kind of up spot here, but in general, this looks like it's going down because there is a lot of contracts on this little side. Um, so, uh, percentage difference in general, you want it to be lower, and it would certainly be lower than 10 cents, would be ideal uh, for most contracts. Um, and you can see that uh, the volume just really drops off here, and there's maybe even a little spike here on um, the difference. Um, uh, so that's about ten dollar difference um, in the contract. So open interest versus so this is slightly different. Uh, I think this is just volume I did and then open interest. So volume versus percent change. So this was one of my favorite graphs because um, we want to see positive change. Um, so basically, uh, you can see huge percent changes here, uh, but. In general, right in here is where we want to be, right? So you can see a, maybe 15% a change and a volume. Uh, so this shows that you really want your volume to be uh, certainly above 350 and upwards, right? So the more volume that you have, uh, but you, you're going to expect to see more change, right? So, and actually you see a significant uh, <laughs> negative here on this side. So um, and there's actually you know, these volumes of low volume. You can see uh, not too much gains. So if the volume, in general, if you see volume of 1,000, uh, 2,000, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to have to review some of the uh, options I've been trading and check their volumes. Uh, this is the spread difference. So this is the ask um, versus and then percent change. So. This would tell you, so you can see here that, you know, in general, we probably want to be in around in this side here, right? So you can see percent difference of uh, like five cents or so. Uh, and then <clears throat> some of these, you know, percent difference, and you can have huge gains on some of these. So, um, but uh, in general, you can see that the percent difference is about see uh, six cents or so and then a change about 15 percent in a given day which is pretty significant gain um open interest versus percent change so <clears throat> this is maybe a little bit more helpful you can see kind of a bowing with uh open interest here of about sixty two thousand and of course you want to have a lot of open interests um so you can see that uh typically um these these are giving you some uh, percent change of like nine ten percent, but you can see that this is uh, open interest forty five thousand. So it's really have to kind of look at the stock that you have. Um, now I do have a bunch of other graphs here on this side that I actually even liked even more. So uh, because I was trying to figure out like well what kind of contract should I get? How many days to expiration? Uh, and you can see uh, that uh, the volume traded is going down as you get more and more days to expiration so that should make sense to you so you can see this is almost a year or more uh, uh, and you can see well so probably best would be around 24 days actually so these 10 day <coughs> contracts are not good and you can probably even do a 50 day contract and then sell it at 24 that's maybe what i'm 
thinking about doing here. So um, let me just pause this view for a second. Uh, so sorry about this. I just wanted to review um, these last details here. So, um, <clears throat> so in general, uh, you want your contracts to uh, be, uh, uh, you know, have a volume of at least two hundred seventy uh, with uh, open interest of about fifty five thousand, um, and uh, there's, the spread should be about five cents. Um, anyway, so. <laughs> Uh, I just taken these notes for myself here too, but um, but anyway, so let's get back to the uh, days till expiration. So here uh, is one idea as well. Um, uh, so this is super great uh, concept here. So you can basically see that there's quite a number of contracts about half a year out, and then you can see these are almost a little bit a year and a half. Um, but the volume you can see is only at about 30 here. And, and what we notice is that the volume has to be at at least 300. And then you can see 400. The volume being at 5,000 here. Uh, and it's only a one day to expiration. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I personally think it would be way smarter to uh, deal with a uh, longer expiration time. But uh, maybe there's some reasons for the volume being so high that can uh, so percent change versus uh, so you do see that uh, quite a, a lot of negativity here. So if you have only one day to expiration, almost everybody is losing money there. Ten days and then you can see uh, that money is starting to be made primarily actually at this uh, hundred and seventy eight days. So that's maybe uh, hundred and seventy eight days. So I'll show you, it's basically about uh, half a year. Um, and then you can say, so I would say at these contract levels, maybe that's kind of a, even almost a sure win here. Um, so you can see a lot of these changes, uh, contract sizes. So actually, you're not necessarily, uh, the percent change in a day uh, could actually be beneficial just on these large contracts. Um, so maybe it'd be smart uh, to just with this, you can see so many numbers hitting here, but actually this on average being so uh, percent change being, I would say about 10%. So in a given day there, um, with at the lower end here, lower and lower. So this is, looks like, uh, is that even true here? So 0% negative changes. So just really depends on the contract uh, in specific. So this is still looking at uh, all the finance.yahoo data. Um, and then this is a difference between the ask and bid spread. Um, so basically, uh, it is bad to have a huge difference. Uh, but you can see that uh, as the uh, contract, uh, as a, you basically have uh, bigger difference in the price. So up in here, you can see there's a difference of eight cents, six cents. So I would say no more than eight cents. Uh, well, even at the high end there. So, but you can see some of these contracts being 95, 280. It's a lot of, it's a big gap. Uh, so um, you might, uh, Okay, so uh, volume versus option contract price. So um, you can see that uh, option contract price is being kind of stabilizing around 80, 81 cents, so it's eighty-one dollars or so, eighty bucks, and the volume here being like what we were expecting, about two seventy, as we saw before. So um, and. You can see that in general the contract price goes up as a volume goes up, which makes sense. Um, and uh, this is the price and difference versus option contract price. And is it the same? Oh, this is volume versus option, and this is percent difference. So, so if the price is going up of the whole contract, so here you got a very expensive contract. So it's in 9,000. So in general, these contracts 
uh, you can see that it's highly skewed here, but in general, you can see a difference in the middle here being contract price about one, the difference of five cents. So it's just a interesting number to keep track of. And then here's option contract open interest versus days till expiration. So uh, you can see uh, this didn't really show up, but you see a lot of open interest at about a half a year. Um, so this is actually good news because you don't see a whole lot of open interest. This is just really losing money a day uh, side for option contracts. Um, so um, I wanted to cross that chart this with a different source of data. So I grabbed uh, basically these data sources here. Um, try to uh, uh, this is botchart.com and grab uh, about a thousand data points. Personally, have to log in and do some crazy stuff like that. But just to, just to sanity check to verify, so the price should equal the price of the contract should equal the strike price <coughs> in general, right? Um, so just kind of verifying that some of that is correct, and maybe just not quite perfectly correct. So you can see there's just a slight skew on that price. Uh, the, there, there should be slightly different, um, but so here's the volume versus date for exploration, right? So you can see that again, uh, this is showing about a 25 days, 25 days, and this is uh, 11 days. So um, I would say basically 25 days is great. So it looks like a lot of people are even getting it 80 days and so on. But here you got the volume going down. So in general, the volume. You want to be careful as the volume goes down, you can uh, lose money because if there's no volume. This gap between here and here could really hurt you because there's not a lot of volume to trade. So, um, price midpoint. So, this is the uh, typical price of the contract. So, you can see here the typical price of the contract being very different than the uh, other data that we saw. But you can see $4 here and so on. A lot of these being different, so there's just a ton of contracts just right in here balancing these off. So, how uh, exactly that works? Good question. Let's actually make this into a new graph if we can change this to a positive. It looks like it drops quite a bit. So, I just want to drop that down here so you can see the, the points. So that's looking like a dollar fifty or so for the contract price and then these to expiration so quite a lot of make points so in general your contracts are going up in price value so you can see typical contracts at uh, by year being two dollars and so on so this is actually a pretty interesting little number here for a contract if you do 1.13x to the 0 0.0767, easy number to remember, and you can just type in your dates to expiration. So if your contract price, kind of compare. Um, so like if your dates to expiration is 50, you just input x is equal to 50 there, and you get approximately value for your contract, which should be 72 if you did that calculation. Um, so uh, kind of a nice little equation there to use. So now this is maybe more complicated to understand. So this is implied volatility on the uh, versus I think it uh, days to expiration on implied volatility. So really nasty equation. Uh, actually, just simplify this to be exponential because that just doesn't make sense. At that point, she's uh, step something. So uh, let's see. Jeez, let's do whatever I did there. Um, so, uh, but basically, you can see the uh, volume versus uh, open interest. So, if the volume is high, uh, you know, you can basically compare this. So, um, price spread. So, this is again showing uh, another conflict here, right? So, is the spread if the spread is going days to expiration, right? So as the days per expiration go up, the spread is actually kind of but right around here, you have this little sweet spot um, at 107 days. 
So that's an interesting thing to think about. The spread is actually going down at this point, um, which is great. So, and that's maybe just because there's a bad contract space right in here at about 116. Yeah, it's maybe some serious money to be made if you understand that carefully, those details. But basically the best spread being about uh, 12 cents or so. Um, and actually, uh, terrible spreads back here being 20. Yeah, so this doesn't really agree with the idea. That's why I wanted to basically focus on the amount of data. But um, decline volatility versus uh, data expiration. Very interesting graph to look at. Um, and, uh, and then the theoretical value versus actual price. So, uh, you know, the, the actual price of the stock is the actual price with the contract as well. So, uh, just an interesting one to look at. So, um, anyway, so I think we've gone through just about everything except for this last one. If we be able to click on this. So, and you can kind of see, uh, so in general, this should make sense, right? So you have the calls, the volume of the calls, uh, and the puts, right? The puts are slightly less because in general, the stock market goes up. So we should expect to see higher number of those. And you can see your put volume being valid in this room, right? About a thousand. Place that for the long run, long run chart. So, um, and then again, we have the total average volume. So, this is interesting just to look at uh, the top stocks, right? So, you can see this little blip here, which is hard to see. So, you can see these first half up to 100,000 contracts is pretty good. So, um, you can kind of see this here. I, 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 so, you can see there's you know, SP, Apple. Uh, Invesco, Kiki, Tesla, AMC, these are some local ones that have got a large number of volume. So down here, NVIDIA, and so on. So these are pretty much the guys that are in the top half in terms of 100,000. Now, we did see that as long as you're above, I think it was around 50,000, or either 30,000, 35,000 open interest, but even the volume of some of those contracts. Uh, 270, or this way above, like things like that. Um, maybe that's a little bit safer. So, um, but these are a lot of contracts. So, if you really want something that's being traded, uh, so here's a uh, just kind of breakdown of all these contracts. I think this one should see the list here. So, see consumer here, you got technology, uh, communication services, healthcare, financial services, and Broad-based ETFs, foreign e foreign ETFs, commodity ETFs, currency leverage ETFs. So broad-based ETFs being a pretty big chunk of technology, actually being uh, pretty much the biggest are uh, self like consumer sector. And that may be contracts are basically big right now, just because of coronavirus and all this kind of thing. Uh, but you might also take a look at those options. So just some graphs here. You can some ideas from, uh, but uh, basically this is the perhaps the best uh, review of options uh, in terms of all the different contracts going on. So uh, I looked on the internet and just didn't find what I was looking for. So here you can see again the uh, call volume being slightly skewed. So you can see there's kind of a uh, put. So you can see here, right? So this is the Call volume, which is 600, and, uh, so it's like six times the amount of calls as there are puts. Um, and basically, this is the equation. So you can put in here your call, the number of calls you're seeing, and you can basically guess what <coughs> the relative number of puts should be for a uh, given stock. Um, so uh, not a really easy one to remember from the other equation, but you know, average option volume will be this. So again, here's that graph here, and then here's kind of the graph. So you can kind of see um, that things look like they are going pretty stable up until about here, right? So now you have a put volume of <coughs> call volume of 
seven thousand. The volume six thousand per thousand. So it's you know this this at that point. So so anything below, I would say just to be safe, ten thousand call or put. But you can really get into some lower numbers here, like maybe five thousand. So say three thousand to five thousand. So something in there can kind of give you uh, at that point. There's kind of a lot of like the these are big bumps here up and down in terms of column puts, and you maybe don't really want to deal with that. Um, but uh, anyway, so um, so this is a lot of data. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, I got some great ideas on trade options. Um, if you have some questions or you want to just chat, uh, give me an email or something, or just. Uh, try to send me a message, um, and I'll be glad to uh, discuss this with you. Uh, I'll give you a link to this data here so you can mess around with it yourself. Um, it does take a little while to uh, go grab all the data and, and create all these pretty graphs. Um, if you want, you can just paste it in here, your latest data, and uh, if I this column, the uh, days to expiration, and I these two columns, and get the data. I would be interested in any updated latest data charts um, this is for 2021 uh, but uh, it's pretty accurate for just about any year because there's just so much data here today we can uh, estimate a lot of things uh, and uh, i'm particularly happy with the results for days to expiration and some uh, details there as well as these uh, percent uh, difference graphs which were pretty cool to look at um, so let me know what else you thought was super interesting I'd like to talk with you 